This is the Emergency Medical Minute. All right, so this will just be a quick medical minute, and it's kind of about speaking the same language as our consultants. So I had a 61-year-old stroke transfer outside facility. Like many of these patients, he came as a stroke alert. He was really quick on the launch pad. He went away, and then we never know what's going to happen, right? Will he come back? Will he not come back? Is he going to get interventional treatment? And if you're like me, often you're in the dark as to how they decide or who's going to get interventional treatment. The neurologist came back and said to me, He's not going to get IR treatment. His aspect score is zero. And I shook my head slowly with glassy eyes and said, yes, his aspect score is zero. So um, this is a topic probably better presented by neurologists, but just kind of a quick uh, minute on speaking the same language as our consultants. So first, you should know the modified Rankin score. Anybody know what that is? So it's kind of a score of your disability after a stroke, and it's the score that the original studies for TPA were based on. So when they were trying to decide whether to use TPA or not, they looked at these patients 90 days after their stroke and said, are they doing well? Are they not doing well? And that, that'll help us to decide. So basically, if you have a score of zero, um, you have no symptoms after your stroke. If you have a score of six, you're dead. So it kind of goes in between. But zero and one are considered favorable because one, you might have um, some residual symptoms. Maybe you got a little slurred speech or your hand is a little weak but you can do everything that you could do before your stroke. So zero is no symptoms, one is a little bit of symptom, but you can do everything. And so that's the good outcome that we wanna shoot for with all of our stroke patients. That's why we're doing all this stuff. So that's the modified Rankin score, and then the aspect score that they talked about yesterday. So this was a score developed by the Canadians actually about 20 years ago. And what they do is they look at a non-contrast head CT because that's really all that we had back at that time. We didn't have the fancy perfusion studies and the CT angiograms. And they divided into 10 areas, and then they score to see if you have any early stroke changes on your regular head CT. So everybody starts with a perfect score of 10, and then they start to score those areas. If you have um, findings of either early swelling or loss of gray-white matter differentiation, where you can't tell the difference between the cortex and the subcortical structures, then you get a point knocked off for each of those areas. So they go through the 10 and then they score it. Anybody who uh, misses two or less has a very favorable outcome. They're gonna have that modified ranking of zero or one where they have no symptoms or one symptoms. And anything above that, I'm sorry, anything below that, you're gonna have bad outcomes. So when this guy yesterday, when I'm listening with my glassy eyes, his aspect score is zero, that means that he had findings already in every single one of the 10 areas. He had already completed his stroke, essentially. And so they knew that he would have a really bad outcome, and so they elected not to take him to IR for further treatment. So, um, you know, the details of the ins and outs of when they do that are pretty subtle and probably depend on each interventional radiologist and neurologist. But needless to say, what they're looking at is basically a predefined 10 spots on the head CT, and they're checking off the box to say, do we see any stroke changes, uh, early stroke changes on those? And that helps them to decide about IR. So next time, you will know more than I did when they talk about the aspects. That's it. Thanks. Emergency Medical Minute is and always will be about free medical education. Medicine's most prolific podcast is successful because of our supporters, donors, and of course, our listeners. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you support spreading free medical education, please donate at our website, emergencymedicalminute.com. As always, keep listening.